welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to MBR, or as we like to call it around here, Nothing But Rants, the show where I find topics that I'm oddly passionate about, and I pontificate upon them. These are not hot takes, but rather takes that I'm hot about. Shut up and grab some tape. Well, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. G Day officially in the books. So, for the next what five months, that's all you have to hyper analysis or hyper analyze. Hyper analyze. Um, not going to be able to break down film right now. Today, we are going to have film series rolling out. I would presume starting Monday uh, with what went down during G Day today. I think first and foremost, we have to start with what we haven't heard a ton about this spring, which is the defensive side of the football. Look, they had two scrimmages, okay, in-house behind closed doors in Sanford Stadium, so open environment, but closed doors, if you will. Uh, Those two scrimmages, the first scrimmage report was, bro, this offensive line, holy hell, this offensive line. These weapons, oh my God, these weapons. Roger Robinson, Got to get some explosive runs out of the running game, but damn, the running game looks solid. Where's the defensive performance at? That's not the Georgia standard. That was kind of the first scrimmage, right? Second scrimmage, all intel coming out of that was, hey, much more like a Georgia scrimmage where both sides of the football look like at times they're getting the better of the other, a super competitive scrimmage. I think we got a lot of the same things today. Obviously, you kind of have to take offensive performances in these uh, types of games with a grain of salt, okay? The reason being, um, they're running very simplistic offenses, okay? I, I can I, I can count on one hand how many motions they used on uh, you know today, right? Not running the full pack. Package, not running the full uh, conceptual design in the passing game, kind of running what we would call the meat and potatoes of the offense. So don't want to be too hypercritical on what you saw offensively, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. And that's the first thing Kirby talked about in his press conference today. Look, everybody's going to watch that one. Everybody saw that one. I care, I do, but I'm evaluating the other 15 practices far more than what we're looking at today. What we looked at today was just a piece of the puzzle, one of 16 pieces, if you will, of the puzzle that they have available to them in terms of evaluation of their roster. Um, The other thing before we get into actual G-Day analysis, Man, they have coached this spring as if the secondary portal window does not exist, okay? Talk to a lot of people in the college football world that feel like they're in a a conundrum during spring practice because what do you do? Do you develop your entire roster knowing that, you know, some of your roster may be gone? So you could spend an entire spring's worth of reps on a two and being trying to develop that two, and then you wake up Monday morning and that two's gone. That That's very likely, not likely to happen, it's very possible to happen in these situations. And, and, and not we didn't ask him about it, but I guarantee if you were to ask Kirby Smart, that is the method. The method is we keep good relations with all of our players. We do the best job that we can of understanding where they're at and what they feel and, and how they feel about their position and be honest with them about where they're at. But also, we can't go about, you know, hoping, guessing, is this guy going to stay? Well, do we put this guy out and and expose him in in terms of putting good film on tape? Because that's what Saturday is. That's what today was, right? It was a good opportunity for the rest of the conference also to evaluate this roster, see what guys have developed and haven't developed since recruiting battles back in high school. So you can guarantee that's happening. Um, But based off rotations today, They played a ton of young guys. They played a ton of people that may not be able to crack the the top 22, if you will, on both sides of the football come this fall, but had those guys get opportunities and get burned. All right, so let's talk about initial reactions, right? Just just off rip, I think most of social media, I was on the field today taking photos, so I don't know what you guys were talking about, um, but I would presume a lot of Carson Beck talk, right? Didn't look like 73% completion percentage Carson Beck that we saw um, uh, last fall. Saw a little bit of indecisiveness with his reads. Um, Obviously, the two interceptions, the first one I'm not putting on him. I don't put really any of those batted balls on the quarterback. I think everyone, when Stetson was there, you blamed it on the 5'11 quarterback. He's too short, can't even throw over the defensive line. Well, sometimes in reality, that's the defensive line not having an ability to really get upfield and kind of conceding their rush and just getting their hands up. 
some of those are are it's not a it's not a stat that you can rely on right that you might have five today you might have five tip balls today and then you could go the next three or four scrimmages you could go the first three games the next year and not see a single tip ball it is a very uh up and down stat it's not something you can re- rely upon in terms of saying oh Carson had problems getting balls batted down today is that Carson's problem no I think it was more of a byproduct to the other guys so the first interception not even gonna put that one on him the second interception Bad ball, threw it late. However, what a damn play by C.J. Allen. I don't know if y'all saw the replay. We're going to be able to watch it on film, but he's responsible for hook curl. He's dropping straight back with his eyes on the quarterback. As soon as Carson's hands broke, he took two steps as violently and as quickly as he could to his left, laid out in full like full layout mode, took the ball right off the chest, almost over-jumped it, okay, and then ended up coming down with that football. C.J. Allen was all over over the place today I don't have the stats in front of me but I would imagine he had eight or nine tackles today I felt like he was very um uh immediate in the flat today every ball that was checked down I felt like CJ got got, uh, arms arms around backs and got backs down to the ground immediately in open space and that can't be said for everybody thought KJ Bolden did a great job of that today as well one thing when I'm looking at young football players and guys by the way these thoughts and observations there's no notes here they're going to come at you like an ADD brain does so just hold on with me I'm going to try to hit everything that I saw and felt worth talking about like KJ's uh, tackle strength or play strength I should say when I'm watching freshmen when they get on the field the first thing I want to know is what does that contact strength look like yeah I mean we're going to learn how to play the defense better and better and better you're going to be in more spots faster than you were you know during g-day come september that is to be uh presumed right but when i'm talking about play strength and contact strength when you strike a ball carrier do y'all fall down together does he fall on top of you is there two or three yards after contact do y'all meet and stalemate right these are things i'm looking for in young football players i don't know for a fact But I felt like every single tackle that K.J. Bold made today, it was either stalemates or he won the physicality at the strike point. And that right there, I promise you, he's an elite athlete with an elite football brain. He comes from great football family. He comes from great football organizations prior to him. He going to learn the defense. All the other stuff from a physical standpoint, is he ready to play? Look like it looked like it to me today. I'm sure there were some some mistakes made and whatnot, but that dude looked like he had contact strength today and looked the physical part. I would say the same about Ellis Robinson at that corner spot. Um, the other guy in those kind of two deeps that really stood out to me, I thought Jake Pope was all over the field today with a club on his arm. I thought Jake Pope made every tackle that was available to him. I thought Jake Pope made plays on the ball, again, despite the fact that he had a club on his hand. Jake Pope is a football player that's what he is he is a guy that you know you can throw out there and survive with on an sec football field i'm here to tell you defensively there's only about 200 of those guys in the entire conference right there there are teams and some of these sec conferences that don't even feel like one of their starters is a quote-unquote winnable player that they feel like they have to replace very very soon Jake Pope's in the two deep right now, and he feels like one of those football players, not only from what we heard this spring, but what we saw uh, today as well. Um, the other thing that I'm going to – there's going to be a big quarterback name hit the portal, not from Georgia, a pretty big name hitting the portal, I would, I would assume relatively soon based off that text message I just got. Um, anyways, back to G-Day observations. Offensive line looked like they were supposed to, however – Defensive line got pressure today, right? Defensive line created havoc today. Not only the tip passes, there are four or five sacks in this football game today as well. Uh, names that popped off. Michael had a great day as per usual. Uh, said afterwards, he played about 50-50. Jack defensive end today during the spring um, G-Day game. I'll, I'll be interested to see what that looks like on film, uh, just in terms of how often he was rotating. Why was he rotating? I noticed, uh, you know, very early on, Georgia's uh, first team unit came out in 12 personnel. Georgia's defensive unit answered in base. So you saw Chas Chambliss on the field. You saw Damon Wilson on the field. You saw Michael Williams on the field. You saw uh, C.J. Allen on the field. You saw Raylan Wilson on the field. That is what we call base personnel with two defensive tackles, right? Um, that That is three outside linebackers or quote-unquote three linebackers on the field against 12 personnel. Um, that's not out of 
you know, standard operations for them, they normally match 12 with 12. I just wanted to see what the 12 looks like, right? Because then I get to find out essentially what is the two deep looking like at that position. Looks like Chaz and Michael, and then it looks like Damon right after that. Um, and, and I'll have to go back and watch the tape in terms of who else kind of flashed. But off rip, Xavier McLeod looks like he's going to be a very disruptive football player uh, at that interior defensive line position. Kristen Miller went out today, a little bit of a shoulder issue, came back into the lineup, so nothing seems to be worrying, so worrisome rather there about that. Same thing can be said about Jordan Hall. I saw Jordan Hall leave the football game at some point with a shoulder injury. So um, don't know if he returned. Turn, but that was so late in the football game or late in the scrimmage that there wasn't much to uh, truly evaluate there from a, an injury standpoint. I thought that was the other thing looking at the roster today and getting to kind of see the roster run out of the tunnel for the first time. Guys, they, they got out of spring practice really, really healthy. Cash Jones suffered an injury uh, to his elbow. I, I think a defensive lineman fell on him last scrimmage. He was in an elbow brace, was not able, was not even dressed today. Uh, Puglisi, something that we told you about, um, you know, over on patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin about a week and a half ago. Uh, Kirby confirmed that today. It is not a ligament issue, which if you've been listening here, that's kind of what we've been, uh, you know, uh, leading you towards. Say, hey, nothing really to worry about here. This is more of a shut him down, let the bone grow back together, you know, hairline fracture type stuff. Let that figure itself out with time. No need to rush this cat. We just got him on campus. We got some time before he's actually needed to play. Let's continue the quarterback conversation with Gunnar Stockton it's been a stock up a ton spring for him right he's not only gotten a bunch of reps but Gunner made do with his reps right Gunner made do and, and did well with his reps not only having a perfect practice uh during the spring period you know going a whole day without throwing an incompletion that's mad right like that's crazy uh in terms of the the level of uh performance in that singular practice but I felt like he showed his moxie today as well the only thing I will say about Gunner is and it's a good thing he's got one of these arms, but watching him from the sideline today, it was very apparent. He threw every single, almost every single ball as hard as he could. Every ball out there today was on a line from 14. It doesn't matter as long as it's completions. I don't, I don't need to see a layer every football. Some footballs require some juice. Some footballs require some touch. I thought that was the... If there was a difference between, hey, that's why Carson's the one, he didn't have a normal Carson Beck day. But you saw towards the end of the, the scrimmage, how many, wow, that ball was in a perfect spot 35 yards downfield with tremendous touch over the shoulder of a defender. When windows get tight, those are the things that require to be like, hey, that guy's guaranteed to have success. I'm not saying he hasn't shown the ability to do that. We just I didn't see it today because maybe it just didn't present itself today. Maybe there wasn't a need to do so today. But that was kind of the only Gunnar Stockton thought process I had in terms of that. Um, had a big hit early to uh, Anthony Evans, who, by the way, I don't know what's going to happen Monday, but they better keep that guy. You know what I mean? Like they better keep Anthony Evans on this roster uh, and, and do so, you know, efficiently. Like he is going to have a big year this year, it looks like to me, um, not only from a damn he's fast standpoint, but I, I knew it coming out of high school because you could watch his tape and know, like, he's a football player. Now, I thought Georgia over the last – basically since Munkin got there in, in the spring of 2020 – every class they would take one of these track guys where it's like that's a track guy can we figure out whether or not he's going to be a football player anthony evans ran track but anthony evans is a football player like you can watch his mannerisms you can watch him after the catch you can see how he attacks the routes and tell that's not just a guy that goes straight that's a guy that understands how to play football um he's gonna be a really big piece for them moving forward i would imagine as were kind of the rest of the the portal additions right trevor etienne showed exactly what everyone knew of trevor etienne i felt for two years now during his time at florida Number seven at Florida was one of the harder football players in this conference to tackle. And you saw that today. He dead legged somebody on the far sideline today and just snapped his shit straight on his face. So that type of football player, uh, Kirby was even asked about some comparisons after the scrimmage and, and brought up or was 
probed with the names of you know DeAndre Swift and James Cook and and he kind of mentioned and and normally when comparisons get brought up in those rooms Kirby's the first one to kind of shut him down players his own player we like him because of this this and this but he kind of allowed that one to go down right with the with the regards of DeAndre Swift saying he is kind of a Swift like back and that's exactly what I think you saw uh today and, and obviously it's been a massive spring for Roger Robinson it's been a massive spring for Roger Robinson just in terms of rep share and what he's done with that rep share right it's been nothing but raving from sources out of the the Roger Robinson camp um this spring and I think you saw today why he's getting so much pub right I know, I know there was one play today where he caught a ball out in the flat and it's like, I think Dalen Everett tried to get him like in the midsection and he rolled right through Dalen Everett and then arm tackle rolled four plus yards on the next guy. And th- that's the thing, right? Can can not only can you run inside the tackles, can you be a bitch to tackle? We all know that stuff about him. But what I don't think the common fan and the, the layman has understood about this dude, because how could you? He's got a really good set of hands, and he can actually make people miss on top of running you over. So I am very bullish on Rod. I've been bullish on Rod since the Florida State tape uh, because that's what he showed against Florida State. He showed uh, top end speed, getting out of the open field. Good luck, safety, coming to tackle me, right? He showed that in one play. And then two plays later, he he gets inside the hole, waits for it to develop. Ooh, grass. All right, foot in the gas. Oh, here comes the safety, and he's diving at my shins. All right, we're going to hurdle over him. Get my feet back in the ground as soon as I land. Here comes the corner. Woo, jump cut. Made him miss, too. You, you're doing that at 240 pounds, bro, like – you're a guy. You're going to be a guy in this conference, um, and that's the way I feel about what it's going to look like for him this fall. Thought Andrew Paul looked like Andrew Paul to me. I, I have always been fond of of just the athleticism and and the twitch that is provided in his uh you know his running frame, uh, and I thought that that was on display today. It's a tough room though, right? It's it's going to be five deep. It's going to get a sixth name this summer in Nate Frazier, who the, by all accounts they think is going to be a really really impact player even as a true freshman even as a football player who's coming in this spring uh didn't see a ton of oscar delp uh just in terms of target share i, I don't know what it was today um but I, I don't know how much of a uh, of a target share and a target load oscar got but that that's not it's not anything i'm worried about it's not anything they're worried about they know oscar's a guy carson knows oscar's a guy oscar knows oscar's a guy the nfl knows oscar's a guy so they're they're good there they're gonna be fine there lost and lucky got a bunch of burn today but i'm gonna have to go back and watch it to see what it actually looked like um continuing the conversations on the on the transfers man colby young and what it is right that's what that's what everyone's been talking about mismatch 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 i got a, I, I tweeted the photo out the, the touchdown catch he had today, uh, quote-unquote, over Julian Humphrey, bro, Julian Humphrey is is wearing that dude like a sweater. I mean, he is on him. He was everywhere on that football, and he found a way to come down with that football. So two things there, elite, elite mismatch weapon, but also like – your quarterback's going to be able to put the ball in spots in those situations that are very winnable. Uh, and that's something that Kirby's talked about and sources have talked about this entire spring, right? We got to win more 50 50 balls on the defensive side of the football. Now, you as a Georgia fan listening to this, you could say one of two things. You know, you got really talented corners. You know that. So it might be one of these things, not the other one. One, we have tremendous mismatch options, right? We have we have wide receivers that win 50-50 balls at a really, really high rate. Or we have corners right now who are immensely talented who can't make plays on the football. It's probably somewhere in between. It's probably corners got to get better making plays on the ball, tremendous coverage, but hey, disrupt the football. Also, Kobe Young 6'5". Good luck, right? Ra Ra Thomas is 6'4". Good luck. Right, Dylan Bell has a 42-inch vertical. Good luck. Like all, all of those things can be true, while simultaneously looking at corner and saying, "Hey, we've got to get better at disrupting these footballs." <laughs> uh, based off all conversations I had on that sideline today, I think you're fine. I know everybody's worried about roster retention. I think your roster is going to somewhat stay intact. Okay, I, I don't. I don't foresee a pillaging of your roster going down right now, okay? I think they feel really, really good about the players that they absolutely need to have, okay, come August, come September. And 
there's no secrets. They they have been very adamant and pushed really, really hard the last three weeks on the NIL front, right? Two weeks ago, uh, two Fridays ago, they had a donor uh, dinner. I'm pretty sure they had another donor dinner last night, okay? So they have made it very, very apparent we need an influx of money. I would imagine they need an influx of money because they know what is coming Monday. Just because they haven't had or they feel safe about their roster does not mean that Monday they're not going to have a starter come into their office and say, Coach, this just came onto my phone. Or, Coach, this school's been talking about this. And that will put Georgia in a discussion or in a, uh, in a bind uh, or a decision, rather, of saying, Are we going to negotiate? Or are we going to let this young man walk? That is something that they're going to have to decide. Now, I will tell you, and I think if you listen to that press conference today, okay, there was a point in there where Kirby says, they know how we do things around here. Now, does, was he talking about practice? Because he followed it up with, we practice hard. We had guys saying that that was our easiest practice of the spring. They're really happy over there. Or was he saying they know how we do things around here because the thing, how do they do things around there with regards to the portal? Well, they don't do hostile negotiations. Okay. In fact, anybody who's come to their doorsteps with hostile negotiations over the last couple of years, they kind of let walk. They, they kind of let go elsewhere. Now, there are some, uh, you know, some differences there in terms of need, right? I think they had a pretty uh, notorious and pretty well-known flirtation with the portal at the cornerback position back in December, right? Julian Humphrey flirted with it. Uh, Daniel Harris flirted with it. And guess what you saw very quickly? You saw both of those football players back at the University of Georgia, right? So there are some, some uh, negotiations here, but majority of the time, they don't play that ball. They will not get Mexican standoffed with a football player. I do not believe. So they feel really good about their roster um, in terms of what's going to happen on Monday uh, when that portal opens up. I don't know if they feel the same everywhere else at the schools that I talk to, right? Uh, most of the schools I talk to aren't necessarily terrified of this next window, but they're aware that something very well could go down. So um, I, I don't think you need to have any type of major overreactions on Monday if something were to happen based off all the conversations I had. Now, if a major contributor hits the portal on, on Monday, I promise you they got caught with their pants down just like I am right now when I'm telling you that they feel good about their roster because they do. Okay, so there's that. Um, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're liking the video, all that good stuff. Um, I'm sure there's some more stuff that I haven't hit on. Um, defensive line, I know I talked about it earlier. Y'all y'all are real deep there. I think that's the key. I mean, it, McLeod coming into the, the, the mix has been a very, very uh, needed addition, right? The other thing I will tell you, because I like to do some eyeball scouting, I ain't never seen nothing like that linebacker group. I, them young guys, I've never seen anything like that. They are so big. They are so long. They are so good and so talented from top to bottom. And, oh, by the way, I had a, I had a person walk up to me during pregame and tell me that Terrell Foster might be the best walk-on in the history of walk-ons. I had somebody tell me, and I hope it doesn't happen, but I had somebody tell me that if Terrell Foster hit the portal tomorrow, he would have 25 Power 5 offers like that immediately. Terrell Foster – Played with the ones today as a walk-on. That is insane. Okay, that is absolutely insane. Uh, and he played like that last spring during G-Day. So much so, we talked about him on film. I had to stop talking about him because I was like, all right, I'm only watching 30. That's how it got at, at one point in the G-Day film reactions last year. It's like, 30's a walk-on, Brooks. Quit talking about him. Well, 30 ended up playing a shitload of special teams last year, and 30 might get daggum playing time at inside linebacker this year based off what it looks like. So there's that, um, and, and, and it's a, a tremendously deep room that, again, I think they feel tremendously good about. Let's talk about the freshmen. Uh, Justin Williams, beautiful. Chris Cole, beautiful. Christopher Jones, huge. Way bigger than I ever thought Christian Jones would look like uh, on an SEC football field. Uh, so hit, 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 hit. I uh, thought Nair Daniels played through, played with some toughness today. Going to have to go watch what it actually looked like. But you're a true freshman. You're in your first spring game. And in warm-ups, something happened. Something happened to Nair Daniels in warm-ups. He was having his uh, lower body evaluated by the medical staff during warm-ups. During warm-ups, during one-on-ones and offensive line, defensive line indies, 
He's kind of hobbling around. I did not expect Nair Daniels to go out there and play. Nair Daniels went out there and played. So when I'm evaluating young guys at that position on the line of scrimmage, like box number one is are you tough? Like that's it. Is a box number one, are you tough? Because if you're at Georgia, I know you're physically gifted enough to be there. They don't evaluate anything other than that, right? Are you big enough, strong enough, fast enough to play here? Then all, all the all the cultural do boxes do you check. But toughness isn't something that we can really evaluate until you get onto a college football field. So watching a kid go through a, a what appeared to be a, a knee injury or a knee something and then go out there and finish the day and, and practice hard and play hard, those are good signs for a young player who you know obviously checked the, the toughness box. So there's all that good stuff. Um, he talked about ending in a tie. He said he didn't want to put a two-point play on film. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Actually, he said a couple years back, they put a two-point play on film during G-Day, and you, you, you kind of feel like you burned one, right? I don't know I don't know everybody's education process with regards to football operations, so I'll go ahead and let you know. You don't have a plethora of, of two-point plays. You really only have about six, maybe eight offensive plays in that area that you really work on right you might have a special formation you might have a, a particular rollout that you like you might have a particular play action uh that you like you might have a particular set whether it's hey we're going to trips bunch right put the x on the backside by himself hope to get one-on-one -on -one, right if we don't we're going to run some type of spot over here with the trips bunch something to make them pick up right there's a whole limitation with regards to what we're actually doing in those situations don't need to be burning one of them right don't need to be putting one of them on tape so that makes a lot of sense um and I also had somebody as i was walking off the field somebody that i trust basically tell me like hey if anybody talks you know wants to say bad things or wants to worry about the offense just know that might have been the plan i'm not gonna say you go out and try to look stagnant but you go out and you have a very meat and potatoes approach. And meat and potatoes approach against your defense is never going to work. Never going to work. You know why? Because since Tuesday, what, friggin' March 12th, I think is when they opened up spring. Since Tuesday, March 12th, that defense that is going to be a top five defense in this sport next fall has seen nothing but the meat and potatoes during practice. So guess what they saw on Saturday? They saw meat and potatoes again. So I guarantee you when we go watch the film, things like uh, truck, like they ran truck sweep today, I guarantee you the front side action from the defense on truck looks like, damn, I think they might have known what was coming. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So um, good news otherwise, but you, you wanted to see the defense play really, really well. Because, again, it wasn't – it wasn't standard Georgia intel coming out of the defense this spring. It, it was, damn, the offense looks good. Need defense, defense a lot, particularly to play the run like we're supposed to. Uh, I, I, can't quite, I can't quite remember, but I, maybe a couple explosive runs, but majority of those were outside the tackle box anyway. So that could be a safety misfitting. That could be a corner misfitting. That could be a linebacker not getting outside fast enough. That could be a variety of things that don't revolve around defensive line play, which, again, first scrimmage, that was the concern. We are not fitting gaps like we are supposed to. That was the whole messaging coming out of the, uh, the, the building. They fit gaps like they were supposed to today by all accounts, it seems. So uh, defense played much, much better. Um, I, I, I think I'm good here. I think I hit on everything that needs to be hit on. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate all you guys watching. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button on your way out. Uh, I'm going to go hug and kiss my family. I ain't seen them all day. By the way, uh, 